Good afternoon, Namaste to all of you. One father sent his young son to buy some fruits. So this young boy went and bought some fruits, came home. And when father saw the fruits, it was not the real fruits. It was the fake fruits. And the father was very upset with the shopkeeper. He went and started yelling at him. That you cheated my young son. Can you speak louder? So, yes, so he started uh, scolding the shopkeeper that you cheated my son, you gave him the fake fruits. So the shop owner told him, sure, before you yelled at me, please go and look at the board. And in the board outside, it was written, this is the shop for the fake fruits for the decoration. It was not my fault, it was the fault of your son. He should have, got, he should have gone to the real fruit vendor to buy the fruits. So, you know, God has hung a board. The board is hanging. What is written in the board? Dukhalayam asashyatam. It is written in the board. Anityam asukham lokam, this is what written in the board, and God has hung this board all the time. That this world is a place of misery and suffering, expecting peace, the way we are looking forward to experience peace is not possible. Today, the mothers are talking about the life of Buddha. Buddha saw four situations. He saw a diseased body, old man, old body, dead body, and the unrenunciate monk. These four situations kind of forced him to leave the kingdom. Think of if Buddha would have seen a hungry man, what he would have done? He did not have to leave the kingdom because he was a prince, son of a king. He would have easily convinced his father, I don't want to see any hungry man in the kingdom. Please make sure that everyone is fed well. That's easy. He knew that nobody can give this kind of answer. Because this answer has to come from within. So most of the problems in our life, if these are spiritual problems, you need to deal spiritually. Most of our problems. And you look at the life of Buddha, you see, and his teaching started with the suffering. You know, interestingly, last Saturday was the Buddha Jayanti, the birthday of Buddha. That was the day when Gurudev also was born, right? And Guruji started talking about the life of Buddha. And a question came to mind, I would ask Baba. Three times I thought I'll ask, but I could not ask. And uh, when I left Chicago, came to Seattle, I picked a book. And I opened the book, I found the answer in that book. It was very, very interesting for me from the life of Buddha, by the way. So Buddha's life, or his teachings kind of started that life is suffering, and the cause of suffering is disease, and so on. But if you see the teachings of Upanishads, 
there is some kind of contradiction. Upanishad says life is bliss. We are born from bliss, we live in bliss and we merge in bliss. So both are true. Depends upon how we look at it. Have you heard of the name Vidura? From the Mahabharat. You can find the life of Vidura in, uh, in Bhagavatam also. Yesterday Guru, Guruji told a verse. Uh, Dayaya Sarvabhuteshu, if you study over here. That verse is actually... Uh, that is from Bhagavatam and that verse is a dialogue between Rishi Maitreya and Vidura. Rishi Maitreya explained lot about life to Vidura, especially before the war, before the Mahabharata war. Vidura did not participate in the war. He was the Prime Minister of Duryodhana in the kingdom, but he did not want to support the, the dishonest and unrighteous life of Duryodhana. So he left. So he left just before the war, he went on pilgrimage. In the meantime, the, the war ended. Lord Krishna left his body. After a few years, when Lord Krishna left his body, two people were there before he left his body. One was his closest disciple and friend Uddhava and uh, Rishi Maitreya. They both came and that is where Lord talked about, it is called Uddhava Gita, the last teachings of Lord Krishna. Very beautiful. And Guruji taught Uddhava Gita in one of the arbitis in the training. Lord Krishna told Rishi Maitreya that you will meet Uddhava on your way back to your ashram. You communicate the message whatever I have told you. He also gave same kind of instruction to Uddhava. Lord Krishna left his body, Uddhava also uh -huh. left that place. On his way, he met Vidura. And when Vidura heard this, the Lord Krishna left his body, he could not control himself. Then Uddhava said, not to worry about it, please you know, relax. Lord Krishna has given some message for you that go and meet Rishi Maitreya. So Vidra went and met Rishi Maitreya and they had some discussion. And basically this discussion is covered in two chapters in the Bhagavatam. Chapter 3 and chapter 4. Lot of discussion. Fantastic. Because both of them were very highly realized. Though Vidra was like Prime Minister, part of the kingdom, but he was like a, he was, he was the incarnation of Dharma. So the discussion continued. So just before, Vidra told something to Maitreya. And this is what he said. He said, Sukhaya karmani karoti lokaha Natai sukhang vanya duparamam va vindeta bhuya tata eva dukham yadatra yuktam bhagavan vadet naha. What it means? Vidra said, O great sage, everyone in this world engages in some kind of activities to attain happiness. But one finds neither satiation nor the mitigation of the distress. On the contrary, only one is aggravated by such activities. Please, therefore, give me direction 
how one could, one should live for real happiness. So this is the verse, such a, such a beautiful way of presenting that everyone, we are all engaged and purpose is one, to experience happiness. But the question is, do we really get the happiness? And, if, and what kind of happiness is it? And the way Rishi Maitreya guided, very interesting. He did not directly answer to the, his question. He started talking from the creation point of view. Then slowly he came down and presented the answer. Right. So now the question is, what he's asked here, that uh, uh, what we call the enjoyment in life? What is it, is it really? And if we analyze more deeply, then we can understand what we call happiness. It is not really the happiness. We think we are enjoying the life, but it is other way. We are not enjoying the life. Life is enjoying. We are not enjoying the time. It is other way. Time is enjoying. That is where it says, Vartruhari says, Kalo no yati vayama vayata. Time is enjoying in the form of the snake. Time is enjoying the form of the snake. It is given the example where a, a frog is swollen, swollen by the snake and the half of the body of the frog is in the mouth of the snake and a, a small tiny insect is moving in front of the frog and the frog is taking the tongue out to take that the insect, eat it, right? So the, given this example, the masters are saying, this is the situation of our life. What we call the happiness, that is not really the happiness. So now the question is, how do we experience peace in this kind of confusion? And you look at life, there is so much of confusion around. How do we truly experience peace and unity? So that is the reason Buddha left. He knew that nobody can give this answer. We have to find that answer from within. And as a Kriya practitioner, we are given the best solution, I think. We need to work for some time. Then slowly, the, the answer will come from within. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the chapter 2, 66 verse, there is a uh, beautiful uh, verse. What it says is, Nastihi buddhi ayuktasya Nacha yuktasya bhavana Nacha bhava yata shantihi Ashantasya kutaha sukham The last line, Ashantasya kutaha sukham This is a very famous line from Bhagavad Gita. What it means? There is no knowledge to the unsteady. To the unsteady, there is no meditation. To the unmeditative, there is no peace. To the peaceless, how can there be happiness? Ashantasya kutha sukham. Ashantasya kutha sukham. What is happiness if mind is restless? So now, what is happiness? Where there is peace. Right? The discussion between both of them, Rishi Maitre and Vidra. Again, the discussion came that who can really claim there is no sorrow in the life? Who can claim this? Answer, Vidra himself is telling this answer. And here he says, Yascha mudha tamo loke, Yascha buddhe param gataha, Tav uvho sukhame dhate klishantaro rito janaha. What it means is very interesting. One who is the lowest among all the fools, one who is the lowest among all the fools and one who is God-realized. 
whoever stay in between they suffer in the life right who can claim that life is joyful these are the two kind of people one who is the real fool who has no idea about life right is nothing worry about life and one who is god realized now you think where we are right? if you consider we are the fools we are happy <laughs> or if you are realized we are also happy right so who can claim one day we should claim there is no sorrow in the life then only we can match the line given by the upanishad life is bliss we have come from the bliss that is true we have come from the bliss we live in bliss we merge in bliss then we can experience the true peace within so most of the time the problems are related to the mind and we know about this and the the reason we do not enjoy the life when even if there is enjoyment still we do not enjoy the life the problem is mind is too conditional because we we have already put some conditions if these things are there i will enjoy my life otherwise no we have put a lot of conditions and if there is so much of condition what is peace and happiness what is joy what is joy now the question comes here who can truly enjoy life in the most difficult part of life who can who can enjoy now the question is can you experience happiness in the in the most difficult part of your life when you are really going through a lot of troubles can you experience peace why you do not experience because mind is too conditional if we can decondition our mind we can experience happiness we can experience happiness have you heard of sri aurobindo right the aurobindo from pondicherry many of you heard it heard his name he was a freedom fighter he was arrested in some bomb bombing case with him many of his friends were arrested so the british the some of the officials they knew sri aurobindo the real culprit but they they did not find any clue any proof to give him like death punishment they did not find any clue who really did it they knew he is the person behind so they arrested a lot of his friends including him one of his friend some of the officials they kind of bribed him to speak against him so that he can be hanged death punishment and they found one person the person felt a weak they must have offered him a lot of money and some of his other friends who were in the jail they also came to know about this this they decided if he become the witness so they will definitely give death punishment to sri aurobind we won't let it happen so those those of your familiar with indian history they would know this so two of the friends other two friends they kind of escaped from the jail in the name of the stomach problem they needed to go to the hospital they went to the hospital somehow they stolen one gun and they finally they killed that person their own friends they killed him so two of them they got caught red handed for sure so they wanted to give him that that much death punishment for the other two friends one of the person his name was kanailal 18 years old on the day of the death punishment 
You can imagine, he had no sorrow at all. He got up early in the morning, read the Bhagavad Gita. With a joyful face, he walked and put, put the, what is that called? Nose. The nose in his throat and just jumped. And they could not believe that 18 year old boy, where can or where did he gather so much of courage? There is no sorrow, so complete happiness and peace. How can that be possible? Right? There are many beautiful stories like this. Another person, he was taken to for the, again the death punishment and he was on the train. He had only few hours. The guards were there. In the train, he slept and started snoring and in a few hours, they you know, gave him death punishment. They killed him. How can this be possible? In the most difficult period of life, because the mind was free from the condition. That is where whatever we are given, the meditation, regularly as we practice slowly, slowly, mind will be free from these conditions, then only we can experience peace, happiness in the most difficult situation. We live in the modern times. Dangers and difficulties all around. And if I ask you, you will agree with me. Have you really fulfilled all your dreams? Because we had so many dreams. We had so many dreams. Have you really fulfilled your dreams? Right? Dangers are difficulties all around. And if you study the Yoga Sutra, so you, you will find Sage Patanjali has beautifully explained the, the real problems of life. He said, there are five types of problems, five types of suffering. The first one is ignorance, avidya. Then second one is asmita, it's ego. Then the third one is attachment or raga. The fourth one is dvesha, hatred. And the fifth one is avinivesha, Fear of death or too much attachment to the physical body. So these are the five types of problems or the sufferings. And again, if you analyze this kind, these five types of sufferings, you will see all these five kinds are deeply connected, related to our mind and memory. Mind and memory. So in a sense, if we find the solution, how to tune the mind and memory, you can be free from all the problems. You can be free from all the problems. And says Patanjali explained a little more detail. He says, the sufferings in the life of anyone can manifest, mani manifest in two forms. Two forms. One is subtle, the other one is gross. The subtle form of sufferings are waiting to come, not yet manifested. The manifested form of suffering has already manifested, manifested in the life. You can think of a, like a seed. Like, in one seed, it has sprouted. The other one is waiting to sprout. So all of us, we have these two types of problems. And while dealing the situations, we need to handle both or we need to deal both problems. The subtle problems, which is hidden, not yet come out. And that has, the second one is that has already manifested in the life. And says Patanjali basically, gave two sutras. The two sutras, he said, this is sutra, um, chapter 2, verse 10. So he said, Te prati prasava heyaha sukshmaha. Te means the sufferings, the five kinds of sufferings. 
प्रति प्रसव हेया मीन्स टू रिमूव सूक्ष्म मीन्स द सटल प्रति प्रसव द वर्ड प्रसव मीन्स गिविंग बर्थ प्रसव लाइक वेन एज समबडी इज प्रेगनेंट प्रसव इट इज कल प्रसव प्रति प्रसव मीन्स गोइंग बिफोर प्रेगनेंसी गोइंग बैक टू द रूट and to start working from there that is one way to deal the problems that is one way to deal the problems and here guruji said how to eliminate them practically he guru said three things the first one he said by sincere practice of kriya pranayama Sincere practice of Kriya Pranayama number one. This is to deal the problems that are not yet manifested, the subtle form. Subtle form. The second one is discriminative outlook. Have that understanding. The third one is non-attachment. If one can cultivate these three aspects in the life. one can start working on removing the roots as long as the root is strong no matter how much you work on the top it's not going to work right so these problems are subtle problems that is the first sutra then the next sutra how to handle when the problems are already manifested when we are already seeing the sufferings in the life that is your says patanjali gave another formula dhyana heya tad vrittaya vritta means that are already manifested dhyana means the meditation right that are already manifested in the life how to handle the simple the word he used dhyanam that means the meditation what does it mean uh, really see when the problem you know when you do not understand that is where you need to approach the great commentators guru ji gave some solution some solution um guru ji gave the practical practical solution relating to the kriya practice guru ji said in kriya there are three things tapa swadhyay ishvar pranidhana three things right तप और स्वाध्याय तप मीन्स द सिंपल वे ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग सिंसियर स्पिरिचुअल प्रैक्टिस स्वाध्याय मीन्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग वन सेल्फ द फर्स्ट टू आस्पेक्ट तप और स्वाध्याय इफ यू स्पेंड मोर टाइम ऑन दिस टू आस्पेक्ट देन ओनली यू कैन यू कैन वर्क ऑन द रूट्स यू कैन वर्क ऑन द सटल सफरिंग्स ऑफ लाइफ now that are already manifested to us in the form of different kind of suffering says vyasa said sukha dukha mahatmika any form of happiness and unhappiness is also problem is also the suffering how to handle guru ji said ishwara pranidhana surrender to god when you are seeing that certain problems are already manifested in your life there is no way you are going through some kind of health issues and you know about this you are doing your best still you are not getting the solution you are not experiencing good what do you do ishwara pranidhana surrender to god oh god i am surrendering at your feet help me so in these two ways said as per says patanjali oh we can truly remove all our sufferings and make ourselves free Make ourselves free. In general, when you, we do some good things, we experience happiness. When we do not do good things, we experience certain certain kind of unhappiness, which is called the law of karma. And the law of karma is following us throughout the life. It will follow also throughout the life. Good deeds and the bad deeds. But for a problem, but for the for a person of understanding. both are problems good deed and bad deeds that is where 
सेज पतंजलि सेड दुखम एवं सर्व विवेक न फॉर ए पर्सन ऑफ नॉलेज बोथ आर दुखस गुड डीड एंड बैड डीड बोथ आर प्रॉब्लम्स इन लाइफ बिकॉज दे वांट टू बी फ्री फ्रॉम बोथ दे वांट टू बी फ्री फ्रॉम बोथ सो दैट दे कैन एक्सपीरियंस द ट्रू ब्लिस इन लाइफ So we have been talk discussing this topic unity. What is the topic? Unity and peace in a divisive uh, world. You may have heard of some Vivekananda and the famous quotation he gave: "Utishtata Jagrata." This is a mantra from Kathopanishad. "Utishtata Jagrata, Prapya Bara Nivodhata." So what it means is. Uh, what says uh, some people can other translated arise and awake till the goal is not reached right? guru ji analyze little bit more guru said utishtata jagrata the if you look at the both the meanings are same utishtata means get up jagrata means also get up guru said no utishtata means get up jagrata means and walk you may get up may again you may fall back and sleep I may fall back and sleep. So the moment we have realized, or the moment we realize, this is what we need to do. Then just to keep on walking, keep on walking. That is called the practice. That is the only truth. And Guru has given the example of that uh, old mother who became a good singer yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, I think yesterday Baba was talking about that. the the trust in the practice and that is the only reality for us that is the only thing that will take us forward cultivating love for the masters other things are good but the main thing that we truly need to cultivate is to trust and practice that will take us forward Here, Paramahansa Yogananda actually talked a lot about, you know, these kind of problems of life. He said that, you know, um, you know, people in the West, most part of his life he lived in the West. He said, in the West there is much more emphasis on the physical comfort. If people feel Cold, immediately turn on the heat. This is the example of Paramahansa Yogananda. If feeling cold, immediately turn on the heat. Heat and cold. What happens? Then slowly we become a slave to our body and mind. Then he said the slavish response to the various sensations of the body disturb both body and the mind. He said, "When you experience certain kind of heat and cold, where do you experience? It is experienced in the skin. Does it really in the skin or in the brain? It is experienced in the brain. Then he said, by little control over the mind, by little cultivation, little bit of strong determination, you can easily handle these problems of life." that means all our problems happiness unhappiness heat cold success failure whatever you name you take it is all related to the mind if you if you tune your mind immediately you can free from both the dualities of life there is a saying in bengali that jato rog murite or bhunite all the diseases is either because of because from the restless mind or from the food any disease we go through it is first experienced in the in the mind then it comes to the body if you really analyze this is the truth one time i sneezed 
there is a person sitting next to me and the next day he had cold i said you have cold he said yeah, i think i got from you i said i never have cold <laughs> oh yesterday you sneezed i said i sneezed one time i didn't have a cold and he thought about it maybe he was affected by the virus and he suffered for few hours you see how how strong is the mind that is it is a jatta rog mudi tar bhudite most of the disease first it is created in the mind then it comes to the body it is it is it is it is the truth i was reading a book uh, the learn to live guru ji gave us a book and in that book that person has mentioned a true story that happened in in karnataka in the south part of india so this person was a farmer early that day in the morning he was stacking the paddy bags in the paddy the cultiv- after cultivation he was stacking the bags and he felt a pinch in his toe one of the toe and he did not mind what what is it so he stacked the bag it was about in the morning time then he, he went to his farm he came back in the evening he came back in the evening again stacking the bag in the meantime while stacking the bag one cobra came out it was really big crow cobra came out and went away then he was a little scared oh such a big cobra then he remembered in the morning what happened there was a pinch in his toe he realized it is from the cobra he fell down and died true story can you imagine this then where is the problem he survived for a whole for a whole day he realized that moment he fell down and dead and gone you see you know why the doctors give placebo <laughs> when people people depend upon so much of medication doctor give placebo just to convince the mind and this person the another interesting interesting story this person he had some break up with his girlfriend he was going through severe anxiety for 4 years forcing the doctors to give the medicine and uh, he did not know that doctor gave him the placebo true story he had you know broken up one day he called his The, the girlfriend the old one he had some strong argument with her he thought he is going to kill himself he took all the medicines just to kill himself all like this much a bunch of medicines he took it he realized he has done a mistake he said i don't want to die he started running and fell down somebody heard he was completely unconscious taken to the hospital they found nothing in the blood because he has given placebo and he, and you see the effect so deconditioning the mind why we are not enjoying the life too much conditional and if we truly want to experience happiness take it granted what the master have been teaching focus more on this aspect if we truly want to experience happiness and peace so here parma yogananda ji said the pain and pleasure that are created by the mind pain in the body can be lessened by practicing control of, of the mind over sensitivity to pleasure and pain strengthens their effect and vice versa the more you discipline your mind the more it will under your control then he said a pampered child suffers greatly over a little hurt and a, and a, and a discipline trained he said spartan trained child may hardly win at the serious injury and if you know the life of parmeshwar ganan ji how he lived very interesting 
From the year 1925 onwards, he went on the tour. He called it the spiritual campaign. Have you heard of this? Spiritual campaign. He traveled all over the United States. All over the United States. Most of the places he went. And one day they were going. Um, most of the time they slept in the car in the night. So he and few other people, they had a big car and he had a secretary. He was also there. So one day it was very cold in the car. They had one blanket. They were pulling each other. Right in the night, that happens, right? When it gets cold, one person pulls, the other person pulls, that happens. So both started pulling the blanket to each other. Then immediately Paramsa realized, what am I doing? Am I cold? Just he asked, am I cold? Again, it is play of mind. He said, I am not cold. I am hot. That is how he would talk to himself. I am hot. He got up put the blanket in the person's body nicely, he slept. And he went out, it was freezing cold outside. Freezing cold. He went out and sat there for a whole, whole night. Whole night means from that part of the night till the morning. In the morning when these people got up, they said, where is he? They found he sitting outside in the cold. He said, they have left his body. Then they started making a lot of noise. Then Paramahasukhan said, what's going on? Why are you making so much of noise? And we are very scared what you did last night. <laughs> and you see. Same another kind of situation happened in Milwaukee, in, in Wisconsin. He was giving a talk. He felt so hot. He was sweating. He could not continue his talk. He said, am I hot? I am cold. He started feeling cold so much, he needed a blanket. And it is possible, it is possible by changing the mind. One needs to work on that aspect till the person reach. That is why the breath is the medium. Breath is the medium. Breath is very interesting, you see. Breath can become part of both our involuntary nervous system and the voluntary nervous system. There are many functions in the body, breath, breath is the only one that can be voluntary or involuntary. That is, not the, that is not the case with the heart. That is not the case with the digestion. You cannot decide your digestion. You cannot decide your heart control, but you can decide your breath. You can make it conscious or unconscious. If you become unconscious, if you are not aware of the breath, then it becomes part of our autonomic nervous system. You see, the moment you are conscious, it becomes part of our voluntary nervous system. That is why the master said, the breath plays the medium in between. If you work on the breath for a longer period of time, then actually one can control every system in the body. Have you seen in Kumbh Mela, people go underground, they cover the body completely for two weeks. They bury the person, right? After two, two weeks, they bring the person back. Control over the heart, control over the breath. Some of the master did it, where Guru is talking, I think Chicago Guru is talking. Somebody forced Guruji to eat some, like four idlis. Guruji ate four. Baba eat more and more and more. Guruji said, no, that is enough. Four idlis are good for me. Now eat, eat, eat and eat. Can you imagine? Guruji, I think, had 52 idlis. And the, the, the rest of the rasam and sambar and whatever the stuff. And he finished the dough. Now the question is, can one digest so much of food? Digestion can be under control. Once one work on the brain, one can basically take every part of the body under control, but breath is the medium. We can start with the breathing process. Here Paramahansa Yoganiji said another beautiful thing. He said, the habit. Our life is made of habit. Whatever we are today, it is because of the habit. He said, the habit begins to form at the age of three. 
at the age of three, he said it is very difficult to change once it is set. Up to the age of 35, up to the age of 35, you can you can imagine more than 90% of our thought process kind of hardwired. It is very difficult to change afterwards. You can you can imagine ninety percent of of we are already decided up to the age of thirty five. It is not difficult, but it is hard to change up to thirty five. But again, nothing is impossible. Guruji gave the example of the that old mother at the old age she became a good singer. So how to form the habit? As we said, it is, it, it is important for everyone, every child to form a good habit from the young age. Then it becomes easier to handle any, many, you know, or to achieve anything in the life. But as you know, uh, we have heard from the master, nothing is impossible. A habit can be formed and cultivated. Usually, if you want to, you know, develop a small habit, any small habit, it is said that you practice for 21 days. If you practice anything good or bad, whatever you practice, anything good or bad for 21 days, it takes, it take, it can take a space in your subconscious brain. Then it becomes easier afterwards. But to uh, to bring a uh, the true foundation, to have a strong root, one needs to practice. It is said that if you truly want to establish in anything, practice for how long? For twelve years. Twelve years. In Kriya, everything is 12, you know, right? Everything divided in 12, 12, 12, 12. <clears throat> if you practice something for 12 years regularly, for example, you take the example of our Kriya practice. 21 days just to start with. Usually, you know, to the, to the new initiates, usually I tell, you know, you, are, you just got initiated, please make sure that for the next 21 days, please practice. Next 21 days, don't stop at all, no matter what happens. You must find 30 minutes of time to practice. If you practice 21 days, then it is, it is very easy afterwards. Gurudev said, practice for 6 months and you take a photo of yourself. Have you heard of this? Right? You practice for six months, you take a photo of yourself, you find a new person after six months. <laughs> but to, to form a strong root, it takes 12 years. Why 12 years? It is the solar cycle. Right? The sun is moving, it takes 12 years for the complete rotation. The energy of the sun basically affects every part of the universe, complete rotation. That is why it, it is said in the spiritual life, anything you want to achieve, commit yourself for the next 12 years. It is said if you want to serve the master, serve the guru, serve for 12 years without asking anything. 12 years. So Paramahansa Yogananda is saying, all habits, begin to form at the age of three. It is very difficult to change afterwards. As I said, 35. This, these are the some of the, the data, you know, people have collect, collected. But spiritual life is a journey. It doesn't stop at one place. It continues. Whatever you cultivate today, that is there for tomorrow. It is a continuous journey. So, on us, we make sure that we 
have that trust in the practice, we will continue the practice. Karman neva adhikaraste, we would, we, we, we have right over the action. We will put the effort, the result will come anyway. Guruji said, I do not remember here in Chicago, he said, when I am teaching, I am writing, I do not know how many people really bring the change or change themselves, but I am doing for my joy. I am writing for my joy. I am teaching only for my joy. That means trust on the action only. Right? Trust. Right over the action. I will do my job. I will do my best. And eventually the result will come. Right? Paramahansa Yoganandji said, If your mental well-being is too dependent on the conditions of the body, listen one more time, if your mental well-being is too dependent on the condition of the body, a time will come when the mind is so enslaved by the body's demand that no amount of physical aid will help. It's such a powerful sentence. Right? The time will come, nothing can help us. So it is very important to have certain amount of cultivation to strengthen the mind. And if we see what is the real suffering, it is the thoughts, nothing else. Adi Shankar said, Bruddhas tabada chinta shaktaha. When people get old, the suffering is because of the thoughts. The negative thoughts become so strong, that is the main cause of suffering. So, let us do this. Whatever we have been taught, Continue doing this. Eventually, by God's grace, we will experience peace and calmness. Even if the world is so confusing, even if there is so much of things going on around, still we can experience peace. It is possible. Okay, with this much, Guru said one more beautiful thing. He said, I have heard the reactions in the life that cannot be altered, tolerated. That cannot be altered, tolerated. Because of our own impulsive reaction, we cannot enjoy whatever is there. Our mind is already preconditioned, live in duality but try to be free from its effects. The world is full of duality, we know this, but not to get affected by this. So we need to create a protective shield around us, that is the, our own practice. And all of us must have realized, the day you have good meditation, right? no matter how much things go on around, we don't get affected. Why? Because we have created our own protection. And keep on creating this protection all the time, all the time, all the time.